Hello and welcome. My name is John and this is Sound Reaction. Today we're going to expand on an idea that we brought up in a previous video and see if we can't apply it to a multi-channel or multi-track session. In the previous video, which I'll provide a link here, is uh, we were crossfading between scenes uh, using Sampler. It's the same concept, but we're going to duplicate the workflow as, for as many times as we have audio tracks. The one thing we want to be careful of is that we set Sampler up uh, the first time the way we want it because we're going to duplicate it for as many times as we have audio tracks. It's going to save us a lot of work in the end. So let's get started. I've already brought in my audio into arrangement view and set the tempo to the tempo of the song. I've also cut it to a downbeat so it's ready to go. Let's have a quick listen to how it starts. Great. So next, the next thing we need to do is select all of our audio tracks. Shift click. Click the top one, hit tab, and pull it into its own clip slot on its own scene. Uh, once we do that, we can start, and it starts on a downbeat. Everything's good. The next thing we need to do is we need to pull each one of these audio clips into their own sampler. So let's get sampler set up and ready to duplicate so that we don't have to do the same work over and over again. Command Shift T is going to create a new MIDI track, and on that track, I'm going to bring in the sampler instrument. So let's get started. Under Filter Global, we want to turn Filter off. We want to set this uh, volume to zero. And now we want to decide how long our crossfade time is going to be. So I'm going to say the release time here is going to be 6 seconds. That's 6,000 milliseconds, so 6 seconds. Uh, another thing I like to do is bring my initial value up to zero. This just ensures that it starts at zero right away. Now, now that we've got sampler set up, we're ready to create our MIDI note. So let's double click on our sampler track to create a blank MIDI clip. And at the very bottom, at C negative two, I'm gonna double click and add my MIDI note. And I'm gonna set its velocity all the way up to 127. I'm just gonna take a quick peek back at arrangement view and see how long this song is. It's 72 measures. So I'm gonna set the length here to 72. And I will click and drag my MIDI clip all the way out to the end. Now I know this MIDI clip will play for the entire duration of the song, as long as we start at the very beginning. So we've got our MIDI note set up and our first sample sampler. Now what we need to do is simply duplicate this track for as many times as we have instruments. So we've got one, two, three, all the way up to piano, which is 11. So let's just duplicate, Command D. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be enough. Now the sampler on each track is set up exactly the same with its filter and its um, release time. I'm just going to make these sampler tracks a little smaller so they fit in the same window or almost the same window and start importing my audio. I like to work it with the zone uh, showing in the sampler. So first select your first sampler, then select your audio clip, drag it into the zone, and repeat for as many audio tracks as you have. Okay, we've got all our audio clicked and dragged into the sampler for each channel. Now what we want to do is set the range of notes that uh, this sample or uh, instrument will respond to. So for each one, and unfortunately we have to do this one at a time, we're going to click and drag the range of notes that sampler will respond to all the way down to C negative 2 and we're going to set the root value all the way down to C negative 2. We need to do that on each sampler as well. Okay, I'm back. 
I've now gone ahead and uh, adjusted the note range and the root note for each of the sampler channels, except for that one apparently. Let's double check our work here. And that one. Okay, uh, now in theory all we have to do is hit play. Uh, and we will be playing back multi-track from Sampler. So I'm going to go ahead and mute all these audio tracks so we don't hear them, and I'll fire the master scene. And in fact, we do. This is a good thing. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, delete all of the audio clips just so that we know they're not playing. And... Um, now I'm going to test and see if my fade out works by clicking the start of a scene and clicking on to the next scene. It does, we have a nice six second fade out. So our next step would be to repeat this with our next song and um, see how that sounds transitioning. So I'm gonna go bring some audio in, I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, I've brought in another song. Uh, it's actually a transition, and um, it starts with a click like the other one, and I've already tempo mapped it down to 84 beat per minute. And let's just clean this up real quick, click, quick and get rid of those opening clicks. All right, it starts here on two sure I've got all my audio files selected. And we'll just get rid of what we don't need. Now we're going to go ahead and bring our audio files over to session view onto their own scene. Um, typically I like to preserve the output assignment of the instruments for as much as I can. In this case, I can keep the drums on the drum track, click on the trick, click track, etc. Um, but if I needed to add extra tracks in here to keep everything track aligned, I would do that. Um, but this is good enough for today's example. The next thing we need to do is repeat the process that we did before, but this time with a different MIDI note. So I'm going to take this MIDI note here, and I'm just going to copy it down to the next slot. Give it a unique color. Oh, that's pretty. And uh, I'm going to put this note on C sharp negative two instead of C negative two. Now, when I duplicate this across, all these notes are triggering C sharp negative two. And all we have to do now is add our instrumentation to the sampler on C sharp negative two. So let's do that. So for our first sampler here, for our first channel, uh, I'm gonna click and drag down. This is gonna add another file to the bin. And I'm going to adjust it so that it starts on C sharp negative two, not C negative two. And now I'm gonna adjust the root note of this audio down to C sharp negative two, not C negative two. Uh, I need to do this several more times, so check back in just a second. All right, we're back, and with the magic of television, I've gone ahead and I've added the audio files of each audio track to their respective channel on Sampler, and they've all been assigned to note C negative two, and I've adjusted the note range of the that sampler will respond to to C negative two and I've also set the root note to C negative two. So I'm gonna go ahead, I don't need my audio files anymore, I'm just gonna delete those so we don't hear them. And let's listen to how this sounds. Good, so if I play this and go to the next scene, everything should fade out. It does. So now we can crossfade any of these clips or scenes between each other. So let's start with the first one. 
And now let's crossfade into the transition. All right, it worked. So as you can see, the process is a little tedious, but if you get your sampler set up correctly from the beginning and then duplicate it, it cuts down the workload a lot. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for more videos, go ahead and leave a message in the comments and I'll get back to you right away. Thank you for your time.